Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Tonight I am going to cook some of that wonderful Cheshire pork that we got from Heritage Farms the other day. I'm gonna cook this loin they gave me, which has got the bone in, French loin. Let me show it to you. Y'all, I mean, this is a beautiful piece of pork. Gorgeous French loin here. Let me turn over for you so you can see that wonderful marbling. Just look at this. I mean, look at that pork. Look at the color in there. And I hope you can see this not too much light and just wonderful marbling. Just tender, tender piece of pork here. This is going to make a beautiful roast. I'm going to take it, I'm going to rub it down. We'll make the rub right now. I'm going to kind of rub it down with a little olive oil based rub with some peat montant, a little bit of uh, rosemary out the garden, cracked black pepper, uh, salt, kosher salt. Then we're going to bake it. And um, we just roast it in the oven until it comes to the perfect temperature. Then we'll take it out. I'm actually going to make a blueberry uh, wine reduction glaze for this. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful piece of meat here. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to make uh, the rub for it. I have here first and foremost, this is just a little bit of fresh rosemary picked out of the garden. I uh, chopped it up a little bit best I could. I've got a little bit of garlic, minced garlic, about a tablespoon or so of that. I've got some uh, fresh cracked black pepper and some kosher salt. We're going to take this uh, wonderful Piedmontant or this paprika that Keith Batag sent me. Oh man, I mean this is some beautiful stuff. I mean this, oh you got to smell this. It's a, uh, it's a smoked paprika hot, which hot means it's very pungent. And you can smell that wonderful smoke on there. That's going to add really a lot of wonderful flavor to this. Just gonna add a little bit of that to it. A little bit more of this. Like I said it's hot so it's gonna be very pungent. I don't want to add too much of that. Now I'm gonna take some olive oil have here. We'll just add some olive oil here to this bowl and we'll mix all this together and this is what's going to make our rub that we'll use to rub that, that wonderful pork down with. And remember I mean this pork is like it's like Kobe beef to beef this pork. I mean this is the best pork in the world. I mean, they actually export a lot of this pork to Japan because it's so good. There's some real pork connoisseurs over there. Really like the pork from Heritage Farms, North Carolina. So see that rub, how it gets just wonderful like that. That's what we're trying to make. Let me get the pork back over here. What you want to do, just gonna spoon some of this beautiful rub over here. I might have to dig in here and use my hands here in a minute, but you know, basically that's what we're trying to do is just get a, a coating of this. Oh man, I can smell that Piedmontant and the garlic. Everything just smells wonderful on here. Look at that, y'all. Oh, some of that on the sides too. Make sure you get the sides. Get that wonderful glaze on there. And I'll flip it over and do the other side. I've got both sides here done. I'm gonna flip it back over to this side and show you. And see how wonderful that looks there. The beautiful oh, coating of this on this wonderful piece of pork. So we're just gonna let this sit out just for a little bit for um, get my oven ready just to kind of come down to room temperature somewhat and let all this marinade just just soak in there really good, y'all. All right, y'all. See what I've done? I kind of covered this thing with a little saran wrap just to keep anything off of it. While I sit here, I let it sit out in the counter for about 30, 45 minutes, just come down temperature a little bit. Um, also notice the tips of the bone, you definitely don't have to do this. I did it for aesthetics. It looked a lot better. I wrapped in foil. That's just to keep those from burning, you know, getting charred all black. But you don't have to do that. That's mainly for presentation. I've got the fat, little, little small fat cap up here. Like I said, on the roaster pan, I've got my oven heated to about 450 is what you want to try to get it. It's at, actually it's set on 500. Mine has a problem getting up that high to 450. So I'm just kind of play with a little bit, but I've got it up there to about 450. I'll show you here real quick. So we've got the oven set on actually 500, but over here, uh, it's my, I don't know if you can see that number or not on there. It's, it's 447. So that's good. That's where we're bouncing here. We'll go ahead and we'll put this in the oven. We're going to let it sit in the oven for 15 minutes at this high temperature. And what that's going to do, that's going to grill. That's going to put the nice crust on the outside and everything. See how it's beeping here on my phone. It's saying it's hit 
you know, 450. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna put a probe in there too in the in the pork roast as well. I'll show you. Got the roast here. I got a probe here, temperature probe. Go ahead and stick it in the thickest part of the roast and try to get almost to the center. Luckily, with a smaller roast like this, only a five bone, this won't be very hard to do. So let's go ahead and stick it in the thickest part, push it all the way to the center. Don't want to hit any bone or anything like that. Just want to go to the center of the roast. Now we're going to put this in the oven. Like I said, about 450 degrees, do it to 475 for 15 minutes. It's going to give us a good sear on the outside. All right, y'all, I actually let the uh, pork cook at about 450 for about 20 minutes now. Now I'm going to cut the oven down from 450 to 325 and let it continue cooking until it hits about 145 degrees in the center. So let's go ahead and cut it down now. All right, y'all, we're going to make a wonderful blueberry wine reduction sauce for this pork. I've got this blueberry wine here from Amato's in Independence, Louisiana. He makes a wonderful wine there. A blueberry, he makes a strawberry, some different fruit wines. But anyway, we're going to make a sauce at the base of this wonderful blueberry wine from Amato's. All right, y'all, to make this wonderful uh, blueberry wine reduction, what we want to do is turn our burner on, get on about medium-high heat. I'm going to add a glass of this wonderful blueberry wine. It's about a cup, about eight ounces. Then I'm going to put about a third a cup of Worcestershire sauce. Then we're going to add about another third a cup of a good balsamic vinegar. Also going to add a third a cup of molasses. Get that in there really good there. I'm right, going to instantly go ahead and start stirring that. I have this little stir buddy deal I use for stuff like this. Just want to get that all mixed up. Keep stirring it here on this medium high heat. Bring it up to a simmer. Once it starts bubbling, you want to turn the heat down again and turn it back up. Just constantly kind of bringing it up to a simmer and letting it go back down. We've got a few sprigs of fresh thyme. I'm going to put that in there and just let that sit there and simmer with the sauce. I'm also going to throw a little sprig of fresh rosemary in there, y'all. That's going to add the bouquet of flavor here. But see what you're doing. You're just bringing it up to barely simmer and you keep constantly stirring it. If you didn't have a little stir like this, and you bring it up to simmer, you just keep stirring here with a spoon. This process to reduce something like this takes about 30 minutes usually. Well, now the sauce is simmered for about 25 minutes or so, and it's really reduced a lot. So that's what you want to see. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to strain it off here in this measuring cup. I'll get all that, the thyme and rosemary and stuff like that out of there. And that's fine. And we're not going to finish this sauce. We're going to finish it with a little butter. Don't do that until the pork's almost done. So go ahead and just strain that off there and set this aside for a minute. But right, y'all, it just hit 145 internal. And I just took it out of the oven. Ooh, burn myself there. Um, we're going to go ahead and put it over here on the cutting board. And I'm going to tint it with a little foil and let it rest for a little bit, right? You always want to do that. Let your meat rest, especially the roast like this. It's still cooking a little bit internally right now. So I got that there. We get a little piece of foil. Look, that's a beautiful roast right there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to tint this with a little bit of foil and let this rest for about 10 minutes or so, 10 to 15 minutes. That thing is going to continue to cook, get everything distributed there as far as the juices and everything. We're going to go ahead and finish the sauce, y'all. Let me get my whisk here. Whisk. And go ahead and bring the sauce back up to temperature. I just basically, you know, I'd set it aside and just poured it all in there. This is the sauce base here. This is good, so you could do this, you know, pretty far ahead of time and save this base. Then you add your butter to finish the sauce. I've got a stick of uh, a salted butter here on the side. And we'll add that whole stick just a little piece by little piece, though until we can get um, everything incorporated in. So just add a little piece at a time, maybe two like that, and we'll just stir them in, just melt that butter into the sauce. And that's gonna finish this sauce. It'll be really wonderful, y'all. So like I said, just keep stirring. Once I melt these two, I'll add some more in. It'll be really, really good. You're doing this, you don't want this sauce boiling hot. You know, you just want to heat up with just where you see a little bit of steam and just incorporate this butter in it like that. 
off. With the last little pieces of butter I put in, I turn the heat totally off. Use this butter to cool it down just a little bit so the sausage just turn out perfect. So just go ahead and whisk this in with the heat off. Oh, we're about to cut this beautiful Cheshire pork. I mean, look at this, y'all. That is absolutely gorgeous. Just want to go ahead and, and take a first chop off of here now. Oh, I, I just can't get over the beauty of this pork here. I mean, hormone free, all that kind of good stuff. I mean, none of it, just all natural. Look at that beautiful pork right there, y'all. That is unbelievably good. I mean, that, huh, wonderful. Let me go ahead and get this carved up. Go ahead and get some of it plated. We're going to plate it with some of that sauce, maybe some polenta, I'm thinking. It would be wonderful for this, this beautiful chest iron pork here from Heritage Farms. Y'all, you cannot beat that. That is gorgeous. So let's plate up some of this beautiful chest iron pork here from Heritage Farms. A little bit of polenta there on the plate. I'm going to use just to plate this up with. I think that would get really nice with this pork. Oh my gosh, y'all. This is it's unbelievable. How good this stuff smells right now. I'm going to go ahead and get this plated up. Also, going to put a little bit of that, that blueberry uh, wine reduction on there, too. It's going to be really nice. We'll just go with a little bit of the blueberry wine reduction over the top like that. Oh, yeah. This is gorgeous. It drips down that plenta a little bit. Get some sauce right there around the back. That's really nice. Have to garnish with a little bit of piece of rosemary. And pour us a glass of that nice blueberry wine. That'll add a good little flair to the meal. But it has some of that wonderful amatos there with this uh, this meal here, y'all. That's a thing of beauty. I just can't wait to taste it. So let's see what the best pork in the world tastes like here. I mean, this is just so gorgeous. You can cut a little piece out of it here. Oh, yeah. I mean, just a... Look at that, that is nice. Get a little bit of that, that blueberry wine reduction on there. Wonderful bite here. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's so tender. We're not dry at all. I mean, from the perfect, perfect marbling on that Cheshire pork. Unlike any kind of tender one I've ever had, there's no dryness in there whatsoever. That's beautiful. Beautiful taste to it, y'all. Mmm. That's blueberry wine from Matos. Oh, yeah. With that, with the reduction, this is seriously the best pork I've ever had. Nothing even comes close to it. You really got to go to that Heritage Farm website. I'll provide you with a link and give their, um, give their pork a try. I'm telling you, like, unlike anything in this world, y'all, this is great.